up. It had to be right here. <laughs> but back to the show. What up? It's your girl Shan from She Gets It Podcast. This is season 10. What's goody? This episode, I wanted to talk about grieving things you thought that were <laughs> realistic, that were basically alive in your mind and um grieving the fact that your reality wasn't what you thought it should have been and that could pertain to um relationships that could pertain to um situations you thought were going to be better than what it was that could pertain to denial um within yourself and um predicament so yeah i'm gonna talk about all of that shit but thank you for checking out the show stay a little bit get a little bit comfy get you a drink get you something to eat but i'm gonna be honest as always i think sometimes we all get um sort of kind of caught up in the idea of something being great. Um, the idea of someone being it, quote unquote. The idea of a situation working out in our, in our favor. And um, the illusion of we are meant to be or this was meant for me. Or um, man, the situation couldn't be any more perfect. And the reality is um, sometimes we make up this comfortable illusion in our minds that people are who we want them to be, that we discard or we overlook or we um, cover up who people really, truly are to the core. And... One thing about real life is you cannot cover up character. You cannot cover up um, cons. You cannot cover up um, truth. You can only um, (sighs) kind of like make the appearance foggy or um, just, just ignore it. Or you might um, you might want it to be so much better that you ignore that it's not quite what it should be, because you feel like if you ignore it long enough, it'll disappear. Or if you if you be better, whatever be, you being better is, is going to make that person be better. It's going to make that situation be better. It's going to make that situation not be so much so horrible but the reality is you cannot fix things that want to be broken you cannot fix things um that are not meant to be put back together you cannot fix things that you um met at deterioration and when i say that means if i walk into a burning church and I'm just like, okay, today is burning. And I come back tomorrow after the fire dies down. And it's a lot of damage. Things are broken. Things are burnt. Things are just ashes sitting in this church. There's no way that I can honestly say without a shadow of a doubt. I can have a whole congregation of people in here tonight we going to have food. It's going to be delicious. We're going to have service and everything's going to be safe. But sometimes people approach things with this, oh my gosh, you have to be positive or you have to be optimistic and you have to um, have vision. But sometimes you cannot have vision when things are shit. You cannot overlook big piles of problems and say oh no worries by next week this person's gonna be ready and prepared I know they look a mess now I know um 
they might be dealing with some trauma now, but I'm going a, I'm to a paint that face. I'm going to get that man or that woman a nice outfit. I'm going to do her hair. Um, I'm going to tell her what to say. I'm going to tell him what to say, and he going to be good and ready. No, you're, you're, you're dressing up faults. You're dressing up illusions. And a lot of people walk through life dressing up things that are not ready, people that are not ready. Situations that are not fit for them. And sometimes people who really love a person and see what they can become try to love a person to the core, to the point where they feel like I can love them hard enough for them to see that they can be better. I can love them hard enough to make them see that they want to be better. I can love them hard enough for them to get tired of not trying, tired of not putting in the effort, tired of um, being a fuck up, and they'll just get right because I want them to get right so bad. That's not real. That's not true. And that is not how you need to live your life. Okay? We all know that you can love a child until you're purple, until you're bruised. You can do everything. You could do cartwheels every day for that child. But if that child does not respect you, if that child does not see their worth, if that child does not care about what you're doing for them, and that child just wants to go against the grain and do everything you tell that child not to, listen, there is only so much that you can do as a parent. There's only so much that you could do as a step-parent. There's only so much that you could do as a counselor, as a mentor, as a teacher, as somebody of authority. Some people are going to sabotage who they can become. Some people are going to sabotage relationships. Some people are going to sabotage opportunity. So for you, if you are not one of those people that are getting in your way, you have to ask yourself, As much as I want my cousin to be better, as much as I want my parents to be better, as much as I want my brother or my sister or my aunt or my uncle to be better or my best friend from elementary school to be better, I cannot bring them on this opportunity with me because they will fuck it up for the both of us. Okay? As much as you want your your friend that says they want the same things you want, but they haven't been putting in an effort, they haven't been showing up, but they've been giving you hella excuses like it's cash value. You cannot say honestly, I know the perfect person for this project, I'm going to bring them with me. You're going to fuck up all of your, your opportunities by dragging people who are not ready. You cannot honestly have problems with a person you're in a relationship who's not trying, who's doing everything that they can to take advantage of you. And you can't, you can, uh, you can't say, okay, we lived in a shelter. Now I worked hard. I did this. I did that. I struggled. And now I got us into an apartment. Now I've been saving up all my money. This person just been out here drinking, hanging out, spending their money, being late on the bills. I got to play catch up because I want the both of us to be in a better place. Then you go for. <clears throat> Do you hear this? Do you hear this silence? Yes. This is a space. Where your ad could be played about your product, where your ad could be played about your business, about your show, because I believe we can all be great on different shows and platforms. So if you're looking for ad space right now, your ad could be playing here instead of me talking and instead of this silence. So next time when I do an episode, and you want to promote your show, your business, or your services, hit me up at shegetsitpod at gmail.com. Now back to my show. Back to my show. Don't say I never gave y'all anything. I'm giving you the space to be great. From that apartment because you save, not this other person. You save because you had a vision for the both of you. You save and now... 
you want to move forward and you want to buy this house. You want to put down this down payment because you've been the um the more responsible one, the one who can have some self-discipline and put themselves on a budget. And you got the house, right? You got the house, the mortgage, and you put both of your names on it, right? But you're the only one carrying the load for the both of you in the relationship where one person is really benefiting off of it and one person is slightly benefiting off of it, but you're struggling, you're tired, and you feel like you're single, but you're within a relationship. How long are you going to keep dragging this person along who have, hasn't been putting in the effort since day one, but you've been carrying their weight? That's dead weight. And how many times have you sat down and had a real discussion about how you feel, what you need, and how that person can honestly contribute to the household, to the relationship, and become an actual partner in this thing where you actually want them to be there? Have you ever asked that person if they actually want to be there? Sometimes people are are childish, people are immature. And people can't honestly say directly that I know you like me and I like you sometimes, but I honestly don't want this relationship. I honestly don't want to be with you. When I wake up every morning, I don't think about us. I think about myself. Some people can't say that and some people can. And you know what happens to the people that can say that? People call them assholes. People call them dicks. People call them um, just, just rude, mean, ugly people. But really, there are people who are ready and willing to live in their truth. And sometimes the truth that we don't want to hear is ugly. Okay? But people should be able to say to you, I don't want what you want, but I do like you sometimes. But I feel like... The person that you want to do life with is out there, but they are not me. And it's also accountability on that person's part that's being direct with you to take themselves out of the equation. Sometimes um, that individual may stay and take advantage of your process of you sacrificing and of you doing the work because you're allowing them to sit there and take those those good deeds and those pros and those benefits of you struggling. Okay? Men do it, women do it, parents do it, um older siblings do it. Okay? Don't let anybody guilt you with love and emotional abuse to carry them in life. Okay. So when I say sometimes people grieve, um, things that they thought were and things that weren't what they wanted, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes when people miss a relationship or miss something that was, it's because they're missing what they thought that relationship or that situation or opportunity could have been is not the actual person. Like I, I've had a few relationships, right? And I can honestly say that I didn't actually miss the person. When I think back at it, I miss the thought in my mind of what the relationship could have been, what that person had the potential to become, but couldn't meet themselves at that point. And sometimes that's realistically what it is. It's not that, oh, you really missed that job because it was really good. Is you missed the relationships you made in that job. You missed the people you work with. You missed the um, family feeling of it. You missed the laughs and hanging out. And it wasn't just um, someplace that you collected a check. All right. You missed the benefits, but you don't miss the leadership. You don't miss the team. You don't miss uh, the petty HR issues and the petty um, clickiness of the office with adults. You don't miss that. Okay? Sometimes 
This could happen with relatives. You don't miss your relatives. You miss the illusion of feeling like family. You miss the illusion of um, everybody's gathering at this house for food and um, a long prayer by your grandparents. Um, But the reality is nobody really likes each other. Nobody really meets up with each other outside of this holiday or this birthday or this celebration. We just we're just coming here because it's respectful to show up for the grandparents. And what happens in a lot of families is once those grandparents die, nobody's coming to this one house to eat, to exchange gifts, to have laughs, um, to talk about anything positive to reminisce on good times. Everybody's doing their own thing. Okay? So, we can honestly grieve people that are still living. We can grieve relationships that we had in the past because living in the mind of being naive is comfortable. Living in the mind of yourself when you didn't know too much of the right things at that time was, um, it felt like happiness when really it wasn't happiness. It was immaturity, not having enough wisdom, not having enough knowledge. Like, honestly, I can say now at 33, I can't enjoy a lot of things because I know better. Okay. And sometimes knowing better sucks because you can't live in the mind of a of a child, of a teenager, because you know better. That food looks good. That place looks lit. But long term, it has no benefits for me. It's going to keep me stagnant. It's going to make me lazy. You know? Yes. Yes, in my 20s, I called out for work and I had, I was not sick. You know what I'm saying? I had nothing to do. Okay. I I got my lie together before I called the store, right? But if I do that now in my 30s, having a house, having kids, I'm 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 taking out so much out of myself by doing that. I'm taking away from my family by doing that. So sometimes you're gonna have to suck it up. You could grieve a little bit. I'm going to give you two minutes to grieve what you thought that was, what you thought that relationship could have been, but it wasn't. And the reality was you did not need that person. The reality was you probably would have been a better person, you know, being more optimistic now if you didn't have to deal with that bullshit and that long relationship. A lot of people know that there's a this this whole job right now that they're sitting in is a dead end. A lot of people know that the relationship that they fake that they have goals for is going to be a dead end and the way that it's going to end is going to be trash. It's going to be horrible. But they they would rather sit in the illusion of what they think and they want to be the ending result than to actually cut their losses now, and prepare for the shit show. And that's fine because everybody, you you can take your own time. Ain't nobody rushing you. You know, once you you grown, you grown. I'm not telling you when. Can't nobody tell an adult when. But there's it's coming. It's coming. For that job is coming. For that relationship is coming. You know, once that blow up happens, you may not talk to that best friend for the rest of your life. Once that blow up happens, you may not talk to your your brother or your sister for years. And then one day you might just show up and y'all might just have a conversation and never bring up what happened ever. But there's an understanding. There's an understanding that I just, I'm fed up. I just got to a point where I was fed up and that's not what I wanted anymore. And I just couldn't hold it anymore. I couldn't fake it anymore. And so sometimes we will grieve people that are alive and living. We will grieve situations that we thought were something, but it wasn't. 
and we will grieve um, places and people and um, opportunities that could have been great, but ego and pride of other people got in the way or um, greed of money got in the way of something being really, really, really beneficial long term. And it's okay because it's all life lessons. All right. But we all have to get to a the girl got merch. I got you on sweatshirts. I got you on long sleeve tops. I got you on hoodies. I got you on masks. If you pro mask out here, okay? I even got you on, um, you know, bags. You know what I'm saying? On the sign that you need to hide your stash in. Fanny Pack World, I got y'all too. Check out She Gets It Shop on Teespring, okay? I got y'all with the merch, all right? Now back to this show because y'all need this information because one thing I'm tired of is what I've been seeing and what I've been hearing. And we all need reality checks. So we just do. A point where we call a shit a shit and we call a spade a spade. And no, I do not play spades. I don't know how and I don't want to learn. But we have to get to a point where we're, we want to be honest with ourselves and honest about what we're dealing with. And what you're missing is not the person. What you're missing is not the job. What you're missing is not your relatives that you were born into. It's the idea of togetherness. It's the idea of commitment. It's the idea of really having a partner that's really about you, the relationship, and the future. And they really weren't. They were just they were just hanging on. They were just riding your tailcoat until you got tired. And they was like, all right, so they're not going to do anything else for me. Okay, I'm out. And sometimes it's just what it is. People are imperfect. You are imperfect. But as long as you're learning your lessons as you go, I think you'll be fine. All right? So one time for the one time, grieve, sniffle, cry, suck it up, move forward. It's just lessons. It's just life lessons. Thank you for listening to She Gets a Podcast. My name is Shan. <sighs> it just it, It's just a thought. This episode was just a thought that came to me um, one day this week. And I was just like, you know what? I can't say that I miss people in the past, but I, I miss the idea of togetherness and closeness and uh, good chemistry of what I thought was good chemistry, but sometimes it could be just manipulation of the situation. Yeah. But uh, you can check me on uh, She Gets a Pod on Twitter. She Gets a Pod on IG. She gets a pod on Clubhouse. If you're on Clubhouse, those rooms are interesting. Uh, you can catch me on Stereo App. She gets a pod. Sometimes doing a show with Greg, Loudmouth Stereo. Shout out to Greg. Hey, Greg. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody out here pushing each other to be better and grind through these changes because I guess people thought 20. 21 was going to be fantastic but it's really just the unraveling of the shit show and we riding that thing we are riding so peace get out of here go do something with your life (laughs) i took up your time enough peace